Right, here we go. A basic um, video on how to get a fuel tank out and change it on a Kia Rio. This is the Mark II, I think it's called a 2 Gen 2. Um, this one is a 2007. Um, it's a CRDI 1.5 GS. So it should be, I would imagine, relatively similar for the petrol versions or not. Um, but the fuel tank itself is a bit of a bit of a faff um, to get out. I'm not going to go a, a really detailed step by step. Uh, the assumption is you've got a little bit of mechanical brain uh, already for this one um, because it's there's nothing really complicated in it. It's just lots of little bits that need to be aware of maybe beforehand. So um, the tank's already out, so I'm not going to show you step by step about how to do it. But I'll just give you a bit of a talk through about the things I've done. Right, so first of all, I came into the back. The, the seats pull up um, under here and lift forward out of the way. And then you can release this. It's got a bit of gunk to seal the, the, the tank um, cover under here. So the first thing is that, that that clip came off. And it needed some, I used some long nose pliers to get at it. Um, just to pinch it in and lift it up. And it was quite a straightforward one to get out. Um, these two pipes, so that's the, must be the fuel uh, return um, of yeah, just the two fuel lines basically. Um, I've tied them up out of the way to try and stop any diesel from dip, dripping over the car, um, just onto the handle. Need to remember to give the handle a clean before I put it together again. The clips on those, uh, they just the orange clip pulls up, and then inside you've got two tabs each side, which is quite difficult to get good grip and purchase on them. Um, but that's all you need to do on the inside of the car. Um, outside of the car, um, when you Again, this is maybe different on the petrol version, but on the diesel, um, the section, the middle section of the exhaust, uh, just has two two nuts. Um, it's just easy to get that. It's four four nuts to get it out. I may have to put new gaskets on to make sure it seals properly. Um, but just to get those out, that's the the easiest way to get them out. Then over here, um, the tank itself, <coughs> I would loosen the nuts off first. So there's just one two, three, and four, uh, oh, and four, that's the fourth, so just four bolts um, that hold them on, they're all 14 mil, uh, sorry, bolts, three bolts, and this one here is a nut, um, the ratchet uh, spanner um, was needed on that one because it's a bit of a faff to get into because there's rear subframes in the way, and um, once you've done that, to release that, as you can see on here, so there's four connections here, well not connections, there's four parts to the top of the tank, that just comes out straight with it, those are the two I talked about with the orange tabs on, that was the plug, so those will come out with the thing as well, and um, then for the the main fuel feed as you can see here, it's just a, uh, it's almost like a fancy Jubilee clip, um, there you go, I think it's a 10 mil, um, that you need to undo that and release it, and it's a bit of a, a, bit of a fiddle, um, but you can pull that out, I did release the screws, from the top of the fuel filler to try and make it a bit easier, but it didn't really help. Um, there is this piece of plastic uh, here, which goes underneath the car. Um, you can see it just clips in on here. Um, there's one nut here that holds that in. I think it's a 14 again, I'm not sure. Um, but that gives you a bit more access to get your hands around the pipes because once you've released the nut on here it is a bit of a wiggle because you've got to be careful that's a rubber pipe going into a plastic tube what you want to do is crack the plastic tube so a bit of extra access is good I then move on to this piece uh, I'm not sure what that that unit is for um, yeah I have to try and do some more thinking about what that actually does and uh, it could be a breather or something I don't know but there's a, a, a tube that connects onto there as well in order to get the tank out, it's it, the easy way to do that. There's like these clips here, a little bit corroded, but again, a decent set of pliers um, just to release the um, release that bracket, pull it out of the way. Uh, that then tube pulls off nice and easily. There is another. It might even be a breather. I'm not sure. So this end, so that's the other end of that connection to the top there. Um, when I First did it, the easiest one to get access to is this one, and again it's like a really thin, oh I'm not pointing the camera in the right place, so there's a really thin bit of plastic here that goes up to the fuel filler, um, and it connects again with another one of those, but I found that that was, that was just a bit too easy to maybe put a hole into, so I went down the bottom instead and used this rubber tube <coughs> and took it off of that one. So that's the way to get that one out. Um, and then in terms of getting the tank down, so I used the trolley jack to help me lever it down. Um, but you also need to, there are the rear handbrake cables and there are some locations. I'll try and whip onto the car in a second. Um, there are some handbrake cables that are 
clipped in and it might be easy to get the um it might be easy to well not, not might be easy it was easier just to release the cables there's two bolts on either side i think i'm gonna have a kind of confirm it but once you've released the handbrake cables out of the way it just gives you access so like I say, it's just four bolts or one nut three bolts to get the tank out um it's making sure you've loosened all this off before and taken the exhaust and the handbrake cables out of the way and um, to make sure you can get the tank down again use the trolley jack to help me un, uh, to help me to lower it down from the car that should be it um fit it back together again should be relatively straightforward and uh, i'll just pause there right so now we're under the car um you should be able to see the so these are the uh, handbrake cables uh, you've got two brackets for each one there's one there one there two over that side as well they just clip up into clip up under the car with a little bolt um, again they're easy to get out so it's worth just taking them getting them like moving them completely out of the way to get access to where the tank goes you've then got the fuel lines obviously they're not going to hinder you to get the tank down because you've disconnected them before you started this bit as I said there there's the that's the exhaust um, and how that goes that then goes across and under the tank over to the, the cat over there. So you may as well remove that four bolts um, or four nuts to get that out. You've got brake lines on the other side. The brake lines shouldn't cause a problem because they're completely out of the way, but subframe could, um, which is just here, uh, or rear beam, if you don't um, remove the bolts and exhaust everything as I'd recommended. So yeah, it's quite a straightforward job. It's just a bit of a pain. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, I'd imagine it'd be similar on the uh, the petrol version the tanks were slightly different in terms of when I was ordering one um, but again ordering a tank was 140 quid uh, which I can't see why you wouldn't do it it could be sealed I guess but there's no point in going to this effort I think taking the tank down or not putting a new tank on so uh, yeah that's it uh, hopefully that's helpful to someone see you in a bit